Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is everyone surviving Sunday? Woo. Sunday morning. How many people haven't slept yet at this convention? Come on, I know there's one of you. There it is. A couple of you now. And thank so, you for doing it, staff. I know, they almost don't count. So welcome to uh, Julian Barrow's panel. The novel panel, where we're going to discuss the very deep and intricate delicacies that are the books. Hi, Jillian. Uh, 
Remember that, guys. <laughs> You're all in this together. Yeah. 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 Um, no, I, uh, an editor I had worked with on another series thought I would be a really good fit for this series. I did not know that I was already a Pony fan from my youth. So uh, she was right, though. I mean, it, it was exactly in line with my sensibilities as a writer. You know, happy fun, uh, silly puns. <laughs> I love puns. I'm sure you guys know that. Um, so she asked me to do a book and um, kind of led to the next book and the next and the next and the next. There's a snowball effect. Yeah. 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 So, how many people here have read at least one of the books? So, there's a couple of you out there that need to uh, pick up a copy. Where can you get these books? Do you know? Barnes and Noble. Is it Barnes and Noble? Yeah, you can, you can get them on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Okay, so they're all over the place. Or at my uh, autograph table labs. <laughs> Not all of them, though. Most of them. I think we're at Aluna. How many have you written so far? Um, I've written 18. What? Model of Pony books. They're not all published yet. Okay. Your personal favorite out of it? Like, one that's like, this is my favorite child. Um, I, you know, I often say that I love the Rarity book, because it was really fun for me to write Rarity. She's, I don't know, just the flowery language she likes to use is really fun. And, um, also the Daring Do books are so much fun. They're just adventure stories, old school, campy adventure stories, lots of fun locations and mysterious ponies, you know. So when you, when you wrote the first one, going way back, how much research did you have to do, like, as far as, like, catching up with, okay, this is everything that's already set in stone, and how intimidating was it? Just going, all right, there's a lot of details I need to keep track of. You know, I, it wasn't actually as intimidating as you would think because I got really into it and then I learned everything very quickly. Um, although, the first episode I saw was the one, uh, I think it's called Over a Barrel? Oh. Which I thought was a very strange episode when I watched it. I mean, that was the very first thing I saw. And I was kind of unconvinced at that point. And then I went back and rewatched everything from the beginning and it made a lot more sense. Um, and that episode is not really my favorite still, but um, I don't know. I think it, I think it just wasn't what I was expecting to see, and it was it started in the middle. So I mean, I mean, I started watching it in the middle of something. I didn't know. Started the finale first. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I learned all the. I think I learned all the details pretty quickly and get a good sense of that world. I mean, Warren's built the world. It's very cohesive and. Sense, so it wasn't too difficult. Who's your favorite character to write about? Who's your least favorite? Um, well, I always used to say that Pinkie Pie is my favorite because I, I do like writing her because she can say almost anything and it makes sense, or you can make it make some sort of sense. <laughs> um, but I do think Rarity is, is fun too. Like I said, she, uh, she's very dramatic best kind of way. And my least favorite to write about is probably Fluttershy just because she's hard to make, it's hard to make her funny. Um, she's very sweet, which has its place for sure, but I don't know, I, I like to go for the laughs, so she's, she's a tough, tough one to do sometimes. But uh, I'm trying to think of like side characters that are strange. Princess Celestia has not a lot actually going on in the show, and <laughs> people really want to see her and see her interact with others, but it's kind of tricky. She's supposed to have this mystique, you know, this mysteriousness about her, um, and adding too much for her character, too much stuff for her to say kind of can ruin that a little bit. It's a weird, it's a weird problem, but yeah. Anyway. I'm trying to recall, but are there any characters in the MLP universe that haven't actually spoken on the show or hadn't spoken on the show that you actually gave lines to in your book? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of background characters in the books um, that have not spoken on the show. When I when I done that though, I didn't know that I really realized.
realize that because certain characters have such a persona, you know, at least, especially by the fans too. So you feel like they have. So it's kind of cool though because in book form, it's so much more chances to give characters that want to get a line more money to the line because you don't have to hire a voice actor to do it. It's just there in the story. So. And you're also limited by the time of the episode. And all exactly. Freely have. Right. Like, you know, I want to write about this today. And Maggie, or someone's like, okay, that's fine. Like, is there some kind of approval process? Yeah, I do. Uh, when they ask for a book, they'll say, I want to book about this character. And then they give me, like, a little bit of time to think about it. <laughs> and I pitch an idea. I used to pitch, like, a couple ideas, but now I kind of have it down. And I, I can kind of tell what they're going to like and what fits into the current scope of things. Um, because I will have the scripts for the show that are coming up. So I know what's missing and what's needed. So then I'll give them a short little pitch and they'll come back to me with some notes and they'll say, oh, this sounds great, but you need to be aware of this thing. And just as you're writing, be careful of that. So most of the time it's very minimal like that. And then I'll, I'll go through and I'll do my thing. And if they have any pushback or any conflict, they'll ask me to revise it. So. Mm -hmm. And one I know really special moment last year was that you got to write your own episode. Yeah. So what, how did how did that all come to to be? Actually, have brownies to thank for that. So. Way to go, guys! Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, which is like length of the scripts or the episode you wrote. 
think it was 32 pages. Yeah. So people crying about that 18 page for college. <laughs> oh gosh, I had calculated recently how many pages of money I've written. All the, all the books and everything. And it was well, a serious. horrifying number. Well, you gotta say it now. Well, wait, let me do it again. <laughs> you guys talk for a minute. One. Oh, no, I'm, I'm loving this. As an engineer watching the calculator work, it's great. <laughs> uh, why are calculators so expensive still? <laughs> Seriously, like TI-87s? You can get one of those, like... Alright, book pages, 2,160. Pony book pages. Whoa. Yeah. It's a workout. Speaking of the Holy Bible, what's your favorite books? Uh, <laughs> in my mind, you just said the Bible. I was like, the Bible? No, that's not the right. dictionary. Um, yeah, the dictionary. <laughs> my favorite books. Um, well, <laughs> I keep getting asked this. You'd think I'd like actually prepare for this question. I don't know why I'm shocked. <laughs> 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 what? Um, Science fiction and fantasy books. I love fairy tales. Um, one of my favorite authors from when I was a kid is an author called Gail, Gail Carson Levine. She wrote that book, Ella Enchanted, which made into a horrible movie. It's, it's a wonderful book. Um, I really enjoy that sort of stuff. Bella Pullman is also a favorite. He wrote The Gold Compass, the Dark Materials trilogy. Also great books. Uh, Harry Potter, obviously. Um, what else? I don't know. I, I like to try anything and everything, so um, I'll read from the bestseller list or, you know, I'm in a book club. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a book club. Alright, so <laughs> what piece of literature do right. you feel that the most overrated? Overrated? Yeah, seriously. Like, the red match will get off. That's a funny one to choose. I don't want to read that one. <laughs> Sorry, you soldiers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you mean like yeah. Was everyone here like, I just don't get it, it's not resonating with me? I'm sure there were. I've, I've been rereading lots of classes lately because I actually think when you're forced to read those in school, you don't really have the life experience at all to understand what they're trying to say. Um, I, I started rereading Fahrenheit 451 recently, and it's very good. I mean, I always knew that, but it's a very good book. Yeah, you like it? It's, it's very relevant now. Yes. Yeah. What's it about? It's Fireman. Um, yeah. Well, you can't just say fireman and... The no, fireman, yes. <laughs> the firemen in, the, in that world, they, they don't put out fires, they burn books. So, so they start with fires. Okay. But they, they're trying to uh, get rid of all the information and knowledge. And when, just read it. When, when did this book come out? It's oh. old. Yeah, what year? I don't know. It's a, it's a classic. Like the 60s. Or, you yeah. know, There's a couple of classics that are out there that are... <laughs> You know, this was written a long time ago, but it's really relevant right now. <laughs> like, I remember reading 1984, and everyone's like, well, 1984 is, he missed the mark, but it's really the future. I really like dystopian people. Yeah. Brave New World is great, too. Oh, that's what's great. Yeah. Trying to think what's, like, overrated, though. I didn't even answer that. I don't know, like, uh... It's really Twilight. pretty on the spot. Catch well, that's on the not a classic, but I hate <laughs> Twilight Sparkle? I just, okay, no offense to anybody who likes Twilight, but I, I'm not super into vampires, it's just a personal preference, and I know that's like very relevant right now, but I'm not into it. Is uh, Dracula already in the original book or Frank's No, that, that's a classic for a reason, that's a good book, but like, I just, vampires are still not my favorite. Maybe it's high school vampires, <laughs> it's been, the always like, you want a sexy Count Dracula? <laughs> I don't know. With body yeah, glitter. Because they never age. <laughs> and Hollywood loves that. Right? <laughs> Say yes, Joe. You can cast like 20 somethings and be like, they're just hundreds of years old. That bothers me when I watch these, these movies like Starship Troopers and it's like, we just graduated high school. I want you to graduate 37 years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not that old, but whatever. Anyways. Here's a question out of movies. <laughs> Oh, oh, movie adaptation. Oh, yes. Books. Which ones do you like the most? Which ones do you like? Yeah. Well, I did just mention that Alan Enchanted was one of my favorite books. I thought they did a horrible job adapting that. I 
don't know why they turned it into a weird musical starring Anne Hathaway. Very strange. Um, what else? I mean, they did adapt Golden Compass, too, into a film, but people really didn't like it. I think so. I, I thought it had cool special effects. I don't know. Have you guys seen that? I, yeah. I, I mean, I remember going and enjoying it, but it had, yeah, like you said, when it came out, it, it was dealing with a lot of protests or whatever. Why? I think it was religious groups. Really? Uh, why? I'm not I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I didn't see it because I thought, it's not off. It, it had something to do with, like, spirits. I think they're actually doing, like, a BBC adaptation, like a miniseries of it. Oh, but any well. <laughs> Yeah, it was supposed to be, like, a multi movie thing. Do you like Game of Thrones? I love Game of Thrones. Excited about tonight? Uh, I'm excited except no, because my boyfriend's gonna watch it without me. Wow. Home. What a trade. <laughs> I know. That's true love right there. I know. I was like, can you not watch it? He was like, I don't know. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Oh. That would be good. Um, well, I'm excited to tonight. Oh, because no one knows what happened from this point on. That's actually the John Snow. <laughs> I do love the whole thing with everyone getting like annoyed at George R. R. Martin. Like, write the book, write the book. I, I feel so bad for him. Do you think he's gonna survive long enough to finish the book? It was a maybe not. Question, maybe he's asking. just you know stringing everyone along, which he's totally allowed to do. He <laughs> <laughs> can take his time. So I was told that the books, like he wrote the more maybe someone confirmed the more hardcore Game of Thrones fan here. But didn't the books come to be in the nineties? And they're super old, and then after like Lord of the Rings came out, they did a blitz of all these fantasy like stories of finding the things that they want. You seem to know a lot more about this than you would on. I just yeah. <laughs> Back in 1991, it was in March 13th. Mark <laughs> <laughs> went to a lunch, she had chicken, and was much better than Sam, and talked to the HBO producers. Speaking of authors, though, speaking of chicken, let's speak of chicken's good. Um, are there any specific ones? I know you've already mentioned some when we asked yeah. about like favorite books, but are there any that you really feel are like big inspirations that you've had? Um, it's tough because I, I feel like the type of books I'm writing right now are, I mean, they're, it's hard to draw too much inspiration from other authors for this exact type of work. For something that I'm working on on my own, I feel like I have direct, more direct influences. Um, I mean, yes, my inspiration is Lauren Faust. I mean, you know, like, it's not an author, but yeah. I guess the, the best thing I can say is I have always admired how J.K. Rowling can write to entertain all ages, and that inspires me. And I aim for that type of entertainment and to deliver that fun, light read that, you know, a kid can read or an adult can read and still have fun. So that's. And then, my question is, why did you want to jump in? Go for it. So, he's talking about inspiration, okay? What are your views on that? Did that ever really heavily inspire you growing up? I mean, yeah. Disney is in every aspect of our lives. I think it would be impossible to say that that didn't inspire me. I mean, you guys all watch Disney movies, right? Yeah. I've seen one or two. Yeah, I love Disney. I love Disneyland. Yeah. I'm obsessed with Disneyland. <laughs> Californians are so lucky. Yeah, I just I just moved to California two weeks ago, so you're gonna get a pass. Yeah, good. Have fun, guys. See you there. <laughs> I'm going out at the Georgia Aquarium. But yeah, I'm actually, actually whale shark that didn't die. I'm actually uh, <laughs> listening to an audio book right now, which is a first for me. But it's um, an audio. Yeah, um, well, because. I am getting used to driving again. I've been a New Yorker for 12 years, and I'm... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm California. It's, it's no, drive near me on the road is what I'm trying to do. But anyway, so I've been listening to this uh, audio book on Walt Disney's life, and it's pretty interesting. Yeah, he... Um, he <laughs> failed so many times. Yes. He was on the brink of poverty so many times, even when he had movies in the theater, and. He always put stuff out on the line to get his vision through, and that is pretty cool. It's amazing because uh, I have actually watched a documentary about this like, huh? the week before I come in here. The movie, <laughs> so we are both at Yeah, the same way. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. So much saving the, the, the studio. Uh, yeah. um, the movie that pretty much gave them the breath of life to continue on was Dumbo. Because like, Fantasia was a failure. That's the part I'm, I'm adding in the book. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I mean, they got him. So they had this neat scene where it showed that I think he was uh, doing little cartoons for I think, somewhere in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like talking about the city. And while watching the video clip, there's a part where this guy kicks somebody out of this, this like room and he says, You're fired. And he spelled your Y O U R. And I'm like, Oh my God. Walt Disney. <laughs> Learn to spell. You won't get far if you don't have proper grammar. Apparently, that's not true, because look at him. Oh, that's true. I guess he's not true. Well, when we were talking about, oh, did you never say that? Uh, what movies inspire you, though? Are there any movies like, wow, this is like heavily like, movies about writing that? Oh, Disney movies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or in Zootopia? <laughs> that's excluded. Um, you know, the Pixar movies really inspire me a lot because they are so heartwarming and funny, and it's the type of entertainment that I feel stands the test of time. I mean, if you watch Toy Story now, it's still, it's fantastic. It, that, those, uh, those stories are really well crafted. And I, I know that part of that is because um, the people at Pixar kind of all put their heads together to create something like that. They, I know in their offices, they have, every time there's a new story, they like put the script up down a hallway or something on the walls and everybody can write stuff in. Which is really cool and collaborative. And that's how Cars 2 came to be. Oh, oh. my God, I like that movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cars 3. Do you have a question? Hey, yeah, speaking exactly of that creative process, could you tell us a little bit more about yours, especially in the front of you know, trying to be like J.P. Rowling or otherwise trying to make something that both kids and adults can enjoy? Can you tell us how you try and approach that idea? Because I know everything from the fan fiction authors to many others in the front of the strive for something. Um, yeah, so the way I try to approach it is when I, I think of a new idea, I think, um, well, first, what else has been said before, because I don't want to repeat myself too much. And then I, I try to think of a situation, the core of something that I might want to say, or something that's happened to me, or drawing inspiration from even a, an old movie or something. So when I, I always use this example because I think it's a good one. Uh, for my Rarity book, I thought, okay, let's think about Rarity's character. She's generous. She, you know, has this thing with her appearance. She wants to be beautiful. Uh, what might be the thing that would really confuse her the most is someone trying to be just like her because she wants to teach her ways, but she, she wants to be unique at the same time. So I gave her this intern who's copying everything she does and is sort of all about Eve kind of inspired thing, um, which is all about Eve is a very old movie, I don't know what you're, but you know the, the film? Anyway, so uh, I thought, okay, that would be an interesting dynamic to explore that character, because I've felt that way, you know, you want, you, you have a copycat, or somebody's copying someone else, and, and that's the so I was just kind of trying to play on the core of her character and what she might learn from that and grow. Because I think that's a lesson that kind of goes from childhood to adulthood. Um, you know, it's it's applicable. So I don't know if that answered your answered your question at all, but I I'm mostly just try to take a situation that could happen and adapt it in a new way. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you all have any questions, or if you know, mm -hmm. don't hesitate to ask. This is a very casual q and session. Hi. Um, you mentioned something when we were talking about like inspirations. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned your own works and, and the freedom you have there. Uh, do you have anything in the works on your side outside the pony? I do. I have, I have about three to four different things that are half-written because, uh, you know, I'm not that happens. That's okay. Um, I feel like I shouldn't talk about anything though until it's done. Probably, because I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it. But uh, yeah, I've been very busy with Pony, so it's kind of some things have gotten pushed aside. But hopefully, uh, hopefully soon I'll have something to shove in your face and say about my book. <laughs> Larson. <laughs> Speaking of which, if uh, Emily Larson's hanging from a cliff, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a piece of cake. Next to them, would you go for the cake or for Larson? I know what I'm supposed to say, but uh, 
Larson. I'm glad that you knew that you were supposed to say the cake, though. <laughs> Sorry, Larson, Larson. Is, is one of my dearest friends. There's a trampoline in the forest, so if you get scared, you won't die. <laughs> okay, then I'll, I'll go for the cake. Because that would be funny to see him jump on the trampoline. That would be Speaking of uh, which... Where's he getting this stuff? Uh, so, uh, have you read Larson's book? Yeah. You like it? Yeah, I do. I, I heard, um... The new one's coming out soon. Yeah. Next month. What's it called? Yeah. I don't know this, what the second one's called. Dime Royal Academy. Talking about Penny Royal Academy, but <coughs> Penny Royal Academy something something. I don't know. It's really cool. Like off the ground, like it. This is like Reese Witherspoon, like support and everything. Mm hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see where that goes. All right. So if you have any questions, by the way, don't be afraid to ask. Yes. Uh, how much freedom do you have uh, in creating like locations uh, in your books? Well, I actually have more freedom creating locations in the books than I. You know, but in the show, in the show they have a lot of. Um, if you try to write a new location in the show, they go, "Oh, that's going to add some money to the budget." So that's why you see a lot of the same locations in the show because it's purely a cost thing. They have to build the sets for that, you know, and pay someone to do to design everything. So in the books, I get to say, you know, they go here, and no one has to draw it, so you can draw it in your head. Um, so lots more freedom. <laughs> but within reason. They don't want me just making things up all the time. <laughs> is there a, let's say, fantasy aspect? Like, you know, they brought the Griffins on the show recently. Mm -hmm. Is there anything going to come out bring it on a horse or something? I've had inclinations like that, but I think it's really important for me to hold back from a lot of those um, instances where I want to add too much mythos to anything. I want to, I want to keep in mind with what you see. Um, and add things here and there. I can't go over Because then it doesn't feel like a show. And I, I think a lot of fanfiction offered to ask me about that. Um, I haven't read any fanfiction, but apparently in fanfiction, a lot of people like to bring in all sorts of fantasy things that would probably never happen on the show. So my, my thing is, if you think it could be seen on a show realistically, it's okay. You don't think there'd be a nuclear apocalypse? <laughs> no, probably not. Wait, in the season, I guess that is. Yeah. All right, well, uh, uh, question for you. And um, then just come out the window. What was it? Someone threw the forks. I don't know. You said something about sure. forks. I forgot. But anyway, any questions for the audience? Yes. Um, first, uh, thank you for putting your ears in the Um, 
but it can be more fun because there aren't all these parameters to deal with or uh, pre-existing expectations from fans and that can be a whole different thing. Um, so I, I don't really know that I prefer one or the other specifically, but I just know I've done more <laughs> of writing pre-existing characters. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But, uh, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it rhymes with rarity. 
<laughs> that was kind of like the point I was going for. Um, but in the book, if you read it, her name, she kind of isn't really called that. She sort of tries to be called that to sound like Rarity. Her real name is Sweetman. That makes sense because, like, from what I gather about the book, everything about that character sounds kind of false. Yeah, she's, she's just confused. She's not a jerk. <coughs> she just really wants to be like Rarity. But, you know, if you read the book, you'll see that Rarity helps her find her own vision. Spoilers. <laughs> I have a question over here, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure if you're going to be allowed to talk about this, but uh, like what you did with uh, the library and of both like characters, are there any plans to like uh, do any stories with like the character characters that were introduced in the other episode? The other characters? Or is it which ones? I mean, there, I mean, like, all of, I mean, like, there were a bunch of characters. Uh, curious as to when you get a situation like now when you have four books to work on uh, do they do you as a writer do one at a time and just power through each one in single file or do you do like a chapter of each one alternating oh no I don't alternate I do one book at a time um, I do have a thing where I have to get those stories to the other ones at the same time mm -hmm. as I'm doing the other one but it's not like I'm writing both side by side, that would confuse me a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of writing, are there any like, solid tips or anything? Yes, this is some uh, uh, amateur writing, absolutely not. Mm, I don't know. I think it's just about being in the moment. Like, you know, you're writing something, you want to get it out, but you don't want to write it down all the time. So, that's really the only way to figure it out. Everybody's got a different way of doing things. I Personally, I like to write by hand first if I can, because I think it makes ideas flow a lot better. And then there's one round of built-in editing 
So that's what I like to do. And I think also it helps not it helps to uh, minimize distraction on going on Reddit. And, oh. Um, <laughs> and things up Reddit. <laughs> no, just just looking at the internet. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, uh, this sentence is hard. Can we open another problem? Oh, YouTube. Yeah. Here's a question. Um, do you go on to start to finish, or do you ever jump around and go to the um, I've tried many different ways. I think I've found the best for me is start to finish. Although, if I am stuck on a part, I allow myself to write something like, in all caps, and I'll highlight it, like, insert scene here, where Rarity does this, and then I'll go back and write it later, really, if I'm, if I'm very stuck. But the way I write mostly is just straight through. Are you good at spelling? <laughs> I love spelling. Like, it sounds funny, but like, ever since you were a kid, were you like the spelling bee type? Oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, one of my biggest moments of shame was during the spelling bee, because I would always get 100% on every spelling test. I love spelling. Like, I still love spelling. I know it's nerdy, whatever. Um, <laughs> spelling! Hey, we're all nerds here. Yeah. Uh, and I won my class spelling bee, so I got to go on to the school spelling bee. And then I got really nervous, like, and I knew how to spell the word. It was locust, and um, hello, okay. <laughs> and I was thinking ahead, and I, you know, I said like, hello, you, and then they were like, I'm sorry, you're out. I was like, no, no, I know how to spell it. Like, Once you say it, they won't let you do it again. And um, I never forgot that moment. Uh -oh. Only I could go back. I could have been the champion. <laughs> And then my brother, with you know, great big brother uh, form, he would run around the house yelling the word locust. Oh no! I'm going to go to Egypt now to get these flashbacks. Yeah. Because they're going to be turning to Egypt. But I, I actually do spelling tests online for fun sometimes. <laughs> that like calms me down. <laughs> I don't see a single red squiggly line yet. <laughs> it's really fun. You go to Mary.com and you set it to like extremely difficult. <laughs> yeah, guys. I do geography tests. Yeah? Yeah. I yeah. don't know the Northeast states where they are. <laughs> geography in this country. They don't teach us anything. Yeah, really no, they don't. No. I take Disney quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> Which character are you? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was doing a Disney trip with you and your girlfriend, and yeah. those questions are like, so many yeah. like, you know, what's the name of Ursula's pets? How fancy is it? What's the Exactly. Or what's Simba's dad up to? Right, right. <laughs> like, how many bows are on this background mouse from Cinderella? It's like, that's not fair. <laughs> and they, it's not just some background mouse, they have a name for her. It's like, <laughs> what? Yes, they, what you, you're in an NLP con where we name every character. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Very good logic. That's a very good point. <laughs> and sometimes rename characters, right, Snowflake? <laughs> oh. That was a joke, I swear! <laughs> no, he hurt you heard me. You didn't hurt me, no. <laughs> Friendship is. <laughs> Alright, can I show you the audience? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, yeah, would you like to invite us to the old stories in the Western Girls universe? Uh, maybe I have. <gasps> Along that same line, where you did a novelization first of Western Girls film, mm -hmm. and I was wondering, like, in doing that kind of project, how did it shift gears at all from the, your approach to writing the other chapters? Oh, the adaptation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was interesting to me. I had never adapted uh, from a movie before, but when I got that, I only had the script. The movie wasn't out yet, and a lot of there were a lot of differences in the script I saw versus what came out. Afterwards, so it was pretty funny when people were like, "That's not the same. You're wrong." I was like, "No, oh, you're wrong." You don't <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Well, I can. Sometimes I had to just guess stuff because I couldn't see it visually. You know, oh, he pulls up in a red car or something like that. Um, just little differences, and then just trying to figure out how to make it work without songs as much because songs in books. Yeah, how do you do that? Like it, trouble? No, I mean, you just you write the lyrics and you, you talk about them dancing. Or, I, it's not as fun. I, I did a whole series of Glee books for, you 
you know, YA Green books, and trust me, that was a challenge as well. I, I said, the first time I got that assignment, I was like, books of Glee, that's dumb. That's just, wait, so you come up with the tune in your head, you're like, this, because I you know, like, in The Hobbit, they have songs. Yeah, I sort of do. Um, or you can just say, like, a jaunty tune, or like, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what the tune is. A pop song. In sync. Do you ever like write songs just like out of the blue? Yeah, just all the time. Just out of the yeah, blue. Spelling and songs. Spelling songs. songs. <laughs> um, no. The best kind of song. <laughs> yeah, okay, so since you've been to a number of conventions, you've met a lot of people in the fandom. <laughs> Have you ever gotten anyone coming up and like being like, what did you do? And how could you do this to this character? And you're like, it was my power. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, it does happen. What are you going to do? Do they, like, buy, like, autograph vouchers just to complain? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's only happened once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> you went for it. I did have someone come up to me once, and they were very angry that I had a job they wanted. Um, that was weird. Oh, it's very work hard to take care of. I don't know. I don't know. No, mostly people are really nice. I think like if people want to ignore whatever it is I write, they just do, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, doing my thing. See, being a writer and having a Twitter account has to be an extraordinarily difficult thing. Like, it's like, yeah. So Terrence person. Oh yeah, no, I do hold back. I, I don't. I won't get into a Twitter argument with anyone, even if they're being extremely awful to me. I've only blocked one person. This guy who hates Spike. So mean. It's me. Yeah. He's so mean. So, so mean. I don't, I don't understand, like, why people would want to go on that sort of rampage of, like, just be awful to so a person who's a person. I'm hoping that he's actually a fan of Cowboy Bebop. He's got no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the writer for that show. Oh, I did. I thought a song that I wrote. Oh, Nobody knows I wrote this song. Excuse me. No. <laughs> I wrote a song called Dance Magic. For some reason, it's on the soundtrack to the Country Girls movie. I don't know why. I have no idea why. Was it the Country Girls movie? Is it in the credits or what? No, it's not in the movie. It's just there. It's just there. Yeah, Daniel did it. I don't, I don't know why it's in the, in the soundtrack, but it is. Anyway. How did you want to That song just seems so random. You know the song, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a good song. Yeah. Have it on my phone if you want to hear it. We'll find you later. I'll also spell some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very very good. Good. You mentioned um, adapting uh, the books. Like, how would you adapt your own episode? Like, when you adapt to doing the story bigger than people, how would you go out and oh, like, adapt that episode? How dare you? Uh, that would, uh, it would almost be weird because I feel like it would be doing the work all over again. Um, I don't know. It's hard to know. I never really know what's going to happen until I sit down and do it, actually. That's an interesting idea. I actually think they made uh, an early reader book of my episode. It's called Pinkie Pie Has a Secret or something, which I thought was pretty funny. I was like, whoa, this is full circle. <laughs> Someone else adapted my thing into it. We've talked about like favorite books and, and characters to write for. I'm curious, was there a book that you hit like the most writer's block with or you found the most difficult to complete? And how do you do that writing project? Mm -hmm. My writer's block isn't actually writer's block. It's like being, you know, like procrastinating. It's not really the same. Because I know once I sit down and actually concentrate and try, I can usually get through it. Um, I'm trying to think though, because there definitely has been a few of them that it was like, this one's the worst! <laughs> oh, uh, maybe Discord was hard for me, actually, because it's just so different, you know, and there, I don't know, I kind of liked Miss Discord when he was evil. Yeah, yes. And um, Amen. now he's, he's just chilling and being a friend and stuff, which is great, it's just funny. Also, in Discord, um, 
a lot of his jokes are very visual, so describing what happens isn't as fun as watching an animation of it. It's like, oh, he brought out a top hat, and now he's dressed like a Shakespearean guy. You know, it's just it's not as, it, it takes too long to describe, so I feel like the, the, the speed at which his jokes happen is slowed down, and they don't have the same impact. He said, I am a snake, and then he became a snake. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little harder, because, yeah, I don't know. I still think that book came out better than I expected it to, given the novel. This crazy universe where you write the score as evil and then they like, touch the back and get yeah. the like, evil again. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Schizophrenia is strong in this part. Alright, so oh, we, we have we have three minutes left of the panel, so are there any more minutes? Have you ever written something that you thought was crazy and, and looked back at it and said, this is never going to get through, and then, it, and then it got through, and if so, what was it? Hmm. I'm sure that the answer to this is yes. Just to make sure Megan's reading the book. <laughs> Thinking through all those thousands of pages. <coughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I did give Discord a pet fish named Q. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Um, I don't know. I, it's really hard to stand through everything in my mind. But yes. <laughs> I will <laughs> take your word for it. Crazy things that have happened. Uh, although, oh, I shouldn't do this. Uh, you have to. Well, uh, like well, they're going to change the name of my Starlight Thunderbook. And I thought, it was, I, I thought it was crazy that they let me name it that. And then they were like, no. What did you call it? Well, it's supposed to be called Starlight Glimmer in the Space Time Suite, but they aren't letting me call it that anymore. I don't know. Well, we Hasbro doesn't like space time, you guys. <laughs> well, what was it that we found out that, like, I know Lauren's panel yesterday, she was talking about the Powerpuff Girls, and they originally named for it was like, well, best girls? Well, because I probably could do that. Why? <laughs> Why not? What's wrong? Maybe they'll swim, but, uh, yeah, I don't like them. Can you just imagine a little girl with a backpack called Mr. Pass? You never get picked on, so. I believe we have time for one last question, so we'll go with you. Uh, for Ms. Barrow, um, how, how much did you enjoy writing the Vicky episode in season five? It was great. I, I enjoyed it immensely. It was, it was the most fun I've had in a while. Although, I wrote it a really long time before it aired, it was about a year and a half. So that was like me like thinking about keeping a secret for like a year and a half. Yeah. Like, yeah. Making all those faces. So yeah, it was great. And real quick, what, what's the next book that's going to be released that we can look out for? Or do we know? It says Cadence. It says Cadence. Oh, it's you have to see it. Like that. It's on Amazon, correct? Should be, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Jillian. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Bye, guys. Have a great rest of your Sunday.